What I have here is the first uh, product I'm going to review for Pro Tool Industries is the Model 481 Woodsman's Pal. This is their signature product. Uh, the Woodsman's Pal was developed in 1941 uh, for World War II. This is not the original World War II model. I have another one of those I'll be reviewing later. This is the ash handled model. Uh, is it a machete? Is it an axe? Is it a bush hook? What is what is the Woodsman's Pal? It is yeah, it's all those things. Um, this is a wilderness multi-tool, and to tell you the truth, the first time I saw Woodsman's Pal, I thought, wow, I, I didn't quite get it. I'm a, I'm a straight machete guy. I have probably upwards of 30 machetes back home. I have all different lengths and stiffnesses and weights and designs, and uh, to tell you the truth, uh, carrying around a, a, a bill hook to me d didn't seem like it was going to work. First, let's talk about some of the design features of the Woodsman's Pal. It is almost a, a full tang uh, construction. The you can see the the handle there. The the metal of the blade tang does not come all the way down to the end. It's not a full tang with two scales, but it is. Your hand wraps around metal all the way. Um, the ash handle is designed for a forward swing there, but also you can turn it around and use uh, the, the the bill hook portion of it. The cutting edge does not go all the way to the end of the blade. That was the first thing I asked them about the, the Woodsman's Pal when I visited in, in April. Why doesn't the, the edge go all the way to the to the to the end of the blade? And uh, that's a safety feature that, that working close to the ground the end of that edge will get beat up as they do on every machete I have. Uh, they're absolutely right about that. The end of your of your blade does get beat up and they they just uh, designed it that way also so it won't have a penetrating point there at the end. It's uh, That's the way they did. Now if you if you don't like that you can always have that ground out. Um, the bill hook, that's the thing that takes, that grabs your attention right away. There's, there's a hook on the back of this machete. To tell you the truth, I, I, when I first picked up the, the Woodsman's Pal, I thought, now what am I going to use that hook for? Until you start using it in the bush, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. But as soon as you start using the hook, you start the hook starts growing on you. That I started uh, using the hook for more and more things. This allows you to reach up and grab things, or reach down and grab things, or reach into places that you don't want to put your hand and pull things out. It's a very handy uh, tool. It also allows you to reach right down to the ground and snap stuff off at ground level, which uh, we used this yesterday to clear this whole clearing. I found it very useful. There's a notch in the blade here, and that notch is so that you can hold the Woodsman's Pal by the blade and have that prevents you uh, from slipping down onto the hook, but you can use it to dig with. We haven't had to do any digging with it uh, on this trip, but that's what that that is all about. You can also use grab the back of the blade and use it like a draw knife, or you can grab your, your blade there and push with it. Uh, there's all kinds of things. The shape of the Woodsman's Pal allows you to do all kinds of different things, which uh, a normal machete does not allow you to do. In terms of stiffness, this is an extremely stiff tool. That it's uh, an eighth inch thick stock, but the the short length of it and the wide blade is very stiff. Now, when you chop with the Woodsman's Pal, it feels a lot more like an axe than a than a machete to me because it is so stiff. It kind of reminds me of a 12 inch Ontario in terms of stiffness. Uh, it has a lot more forward weight and it hits like a hatchet. It it does not hit uh, like a machete. To me, the weight distribution and the way the thing is set up, it, it you, you have to think of it think of it as an axe that you can use like a machete. Um, I have been very impressed with the amount of power that I get out of the, the Wisman's Pal. For such a short blade, it really does hit very hard. Because of the weight distribution out there, it, I feel like I'm using a hatchet. Because of the shape of the Woodsman's Pal, the sheath looks a little bit different. My first impression of the sheath is it seemed to me like a little canoe paddle that would be hanging off my belt. And I thought, well, that it doesn't seem uh, that convenient. Actually, when the sheath is hanging on your belt, it is it hangs very high, so it doesn't you don't you don't get your leg wrapped around it like uh, with a regular machete sheath. Oftentimes, the machete is so long that when you raise your your leg, you, it, you're hitting into the bottom of the sheath. So I like a 14-inch blade because of that reason. Because you have this oddly shaped blade in there, the the sheath is wider at the bottom. You have a snap here at the top, which you open up, and then the Velcro comes out, and the hook actually hooks around this little pin which is inside the sheath. Uh, it's not 
as odd to, to, to take it out of the sheath as I thought. It's pretty much you just undo that snap and push forward and, and the blade comes right out. Putting it away sometimes, it is a, a two-handed operation where you actually do have to look. So that is, that's just one of the things you have to put up with because you have the, the shape there. You, don't, you can't form a sheath that you can just drop it straight down in. So that is, uh, the, the sheath is good for carrying it, but if, if you're taking it in and out all day, that does kind of drive you crazy. But I, to me, it is, is worth it with to carry such a quality, well-built tool. It does not bother me as nearly like I thought it would uh, from looking at the photographs of it. Until I got out here in the bush and started using the tool, I didn't realize how much of a non-issue the odd-shaped sheath was. All in all, I am very impressed with the Woodsman's Pal. You will be seeing other videos coming out reviewing the Woodsman's Pal. I've got all kinds of uh, footage now I can show you of, of us using it yesterday, clearing up this campsite. Uh, we're out here getting ready for uh, training here in a week. We're bringing a group of guys through here. I'll probably take the Woodsman's Pal on that trip as well. You might recognize the place where I'm at from some of my other videos. This is a place we call Bushmaster One. It's uh, our main one of our main training areas where we run the uh, the Bushmaster course. I've also run for Ardua here many times. No one's been here since November. You can see all the growth which has come up in the area since then. This idea of having a low impact is always a good idea. We try not to beat up on the bush that much, but it's not like we have to worry about it either. With a growing season here year-round, whenever you stop using an area, it just grows back into jungle immediately. Uh, this clearing is being overtaken very quickly. so. One of our objectives today is to get this place cleaned up a little bit so we can continue to use it for training and uh, I'm going to give the Woodsman's Pal quite the workout today. Now the hook, I'm liking the hook. At first, uh, when I picked it up, I thought, do I want that hook all the time? But the hook allows you to reach down and just cut things off right at the base. It's actually less, uh, much less dangerous than, than swinging at, down at that level. Because you're always bent over and you're swinging down towards your feet. But the hook just reaches in and uh, snaps this stuff right off. This clearing is full of stuff like this, and with the hook, you just cut them off. I'm waiting for the ants to come get me. <laughs> She's probably loaded with them. I'm saying it's yeah. <laughs> you're gonna find it in there. Don't lose my tool. It's gonna break. Yeah, it's gonna break on its own. Here we go, here we go, here we go. This here is an Mbauba. Mbauba trees are one of our 
prime uh, friction firewoods here in the Mata Atlantica. And it just so happens we need uh, a section of this to take home for our bushcraft course so it'll be nice and seasoned and dried out. And uh, this one happened to cross, fall across our trail in the months that we've been gone. So we're going to take a section of this out and split it so it'll be nice and dry. The problem with Mbaoba is that this is a hollow tree and the inside of this thing are usually colonized by ants. So I, I don't know if we're going to get invaded by ants. We're going to, we'll see if, uh, if this thing opens up and ants pour out of it. Don't be surprised. We're going to take this thing apart right now with the uh, Model 481 Woodsman's Pal. This is the standard model uh, with the ash handle. Extremely comfortable handle to use. I really enjoy uh, the handle on the Woodsman's Pal. Come on, let's get a close up here. Let's see. This is the 481 model of the Woodsman's Pal. I uh, haven't really done anything much to this other than I, I did uh, sharpen the edge the way I like it. I've just got a nice convex edge on there. I did a little bit of, uh, just a minor bit of sharpening on the, the hook. The Woodsman's Pal comes with an ash handle and uh, American ash handle, as they would say there at Pro Tool. The uh, wrist lanyard is kind of uh, a misnomer. I don't like to use a, a wrist lanyard around my, my wrist like this uh, because it kind of flops around. What I like to do is take your thumb, put it through there, wrap it around the back of your hand, and it becomes rock solid. And uh, so that's how it, it can't slide off your hand. In fact, you know, if, if I can open my hand totally and it lose my grip totally on the tool and it won't fly out of my hand that way. How long of a section do you think, Belt? Yeah, that's big enough. The section that's across the trail here? Yeah. Big enough. Whoa! That was fast. That was fast. The top end of it broke off. Man, you see how deep that pit? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That part seems to be way better than the other one. Yeah, this is good stuff. That whole thing's good. You can see, look at that. It's not all eaten apart with the uh, termites. Now I'm liking the Woodsman's Pal. With the lanyard around the back of the hand like that, it's a very secure in the hand too. You can really, you really feel like you can lay out as much power as you can generate with your arm and not feel like you're about to lose grip on the tool. I'm very happy with this performance. This video is just uh, pretty much my first impressions of the tool. I do not have a lot of experience working with the Woodsman's Pal. I aim to change that. Uh, I have another two years down here in Brazil and we will be getting out to the bush and you will be seeing more of the Woodsman's Pal. It does have some unique possibilities and I'm sure there's all kinds of things that I've yet to discover about how useful this tool is, the shape is. It, it has been around since 1941 and has been used in every theater of war 
that the United States has engaged in since that time. So obviously there are things, a lot to, lot to know about this tool which I haven't discovered yet. I look forward to discovering some of the new possibilities of, the, of uh, an old classic tool such as the Woodsman's Pal. I do have other, uh, another model, the Woodsman's Pal, that I'll be reviewing, the military version, the LC-14B uh, version and uh, some other items from Pro Tool Industries which uh, I think you're going to like. So stay tuned for more Woodsman's Pal here on the Colhane Channel.